Often ask me, Clyde Becker, you love bias cut. What kind of fabric works best in it? Well, I find really most. And instead of doing a lot of talking, could I show you? So I'll bring on Tony and Deborah, because on Deborah we have the muslin first, and of course this is the way the participants of this seminar at Iowa State University and I have been working. Uh, developing their idea into muslin, and then someday I hope they'll put it into fabric. So in New York, I first did this muslin, very bias cut, and then on Tony, you see the dress as it developed in wool crepe. So there we have an idea of how one bias works in a sturdy fabric such as wool crepe. That sleeve, incidentally, is also very biased, and don't forget that you're going to preserve that grain until you're at the machine, but once there, you're going to stretch like mad just what I'm doing as you machine stitch. We go from the sturdiness, say, of black wool crepe to the fragility of pure silk chiffon, this one an import from France, on EJ. We hit all kinds of biases on the side. We're on cross grain in the back, more bias on the side, and we're on salvage grain in the front. The skirt, very much bias. Here, to show you the detail that we do, I wanted all of these stripes to continue, so I could not do it at the band of the skirt. We took a stripe, a satin stripe, we faced it in silk chiffon, and to make that stripe continue, the, we then applied these by hand at the waist. Pure silk chiffon comes out on Nikki Buck, this very, very elegant lady, who is one of the staff members of the textile and clothing department here at Iowa State University. On Nikki, more pure silk chiffon from France. Here again, very, very biased. We did center front and center back. On the sides, or rather also on, first of all, on that center front and the center back, won't you please miter the way we've done here. On the sides, we made those stripes match. So indeed, your job is going to be harder if you're working with stripes. On Nikki, there is an underdress of silk. And Nikki, as I lead you down, could we show in the camera how we have made the stripes of the yoke match the stripes of the dress? You're going to have a lot of work if you're working with stripes. We go from silk chiffon to a jersey on Mary Ellen. This one is the Kiana fiber and I indeed like it as a man-made. We are very, very biasy in all the front of this dress. We do wrap around to straight grain in the back because it is straight grain that I feel works best for your zippers. Yes, indeed, there is a reason for cutting jersey on bias. There's not that much stretch on the straight grain. On the cross grain, there's enormous stretch. And in that bias, there is enormous, enormous stretch. If you're working in such a pale tone as this gray in Jersey, my suggestion to you would be that you double the fabric. We've simply underlined it in itself. From Jersey to linen, that superb fiber that I hope you ladies don't desert, although you tell me it wrinkles, but again, I bring you my story that it is the most aristocratic of wrinkles. Here on Lari, we are very biased in the back. So indeed, I think linen works beautifully with bias grain. Two-tone dresses, they're in the fashion wind. If you're going to do them, you must do impeccably clean, beautiful curves, beautiful straights. And remember, you achieve that beautiful kind of a curve if you will pin, as we are doing here in the seminar at Iowa State University, this garment from the right side, then slip based from the right side by hand, then you turn inside out and you're ready for machine stitching. With that thought of how a muslin develops into a garment, I bring on Mary first. And Mary, could we have a hand in the pocket? This is the muslin of the dress you now see on Kim. Kim Williams, another member of the staff, also as is Mary. So here we have this very biasy muslin, which developed into this very biasy skirt of pure silk gazar. 
Yes, of course there's a piecing down there. The fabric's an import. It was only 36 inches wide. So what could we do but to piece? I don't think you're really aware of that piecing, are you? Most people who buy bias clothes realize that somewhere along the line it probably is going to have to be pieced. So here, one of those very crisp fabrics that are moving back into the fashion picture, Silk Gazar, G-A-Z-A-R, made in Switzerland, I think it's a superb piece of fiber again in pure silk. That little band that you saw on the muslin is here indeed on Kim Williams. The top is a glittery kind of fabric I found in France. It's a combination of silk, rayon, and cotton. Please would you notice that we have a bias here at the sleeve of pure silk organza. All of these little balls, which I bought by the yard in France, are on wooden bases and all of that silk thread has been woven around it by hand. Some story there. Now, when we were first doing the skirt, we had only one layer and I felt it really looked a little bit transparent. So instead of underlining the skirt, I simply made another skirt of pink, this time pure silk shantung. And you see people, my idea was that that way I was going to sell two skirts rather than one. Remember, you've got to keep in business. We bring back EJ to show more bias. Here, pure silk. A beautiful piece from Italy. It's pure silk crepe de chine. And what has cost us a great deal of money in this coat or coat dress, however you want to wear it, is rimming all of this hem and all of this sleeve in a bias of pure silk satin. Notice, please, what has happened here, the work of the steam iron. Yes, indeed, you can be make those folds behave if you will put in needles in between the folds and put the steam iron very close to it and set those folds. E.J., may we show the dress underneath? And in doing so, I'm going to ask you to really do a turn. Let me have the coat. We are indeed biased here. And when you have a superb looking girl like this, it's great fun, isn't it? We've yards and yards and yards of crepe back satin. The word for it today is charmeuse if we want to get very fancy fashion-y. But it is really crepe back satin. The top very much bias, all of these folds on bias, and indeed we had to work to get those points sharp. Are you ready, young lady? Thank you. We bring on Deborah. Not all of the clothes I do are bias, although I much prefer them. On Deborah and her wonderful look is pure silk crepe very straight grain. The only place we're biased here is this little rim around the hem. And if you're going to do such a rim, could I get you to think four layers? We're not just one layer here. We've cut this quarter of an inch, an inch and a half wide. We've machine stitched from the top. I'm on the fold, which we can do very cleanly by hand. The other bias, of course, is this very, very skinny one. And may I take it from you, Deborah? to show people that if they are patient, we can really do these very, very long. Deborah, as I lead you down, I'm going to explain to people that this dress has no zipper, and if you can avoid the zipper, marvelous. In other words, these buttons work. Deborah, may I give you the bias as well? We bring on Mary in one more straight grain version, this pure silk. We are biasy in the work of this sleeve. I think somewhere along the line, if you can incorporate lace into your garment. Did I call you Mary when you're Betty? I keep doing that, I'm sorry. If we can do that somewhere along the line, it does add a very romantic feminine look to a dress, especially if you're in black. We now bring on Mary, not Betty. <laughs> and we're showing a lot of bastings here. I feel you must do bastings, and we could not be more biased than we are on this garment. Again, a piece of silk crepe and import, and I feel a beautiful one. And again, that story that we're very biased in the sleeve and how that bias is going to give with you. And again, that story, please, that don't think here just straight true bias. In other words, this is a bias is following the anatomy. At the diaphragm area, if you saw the pattern flat, it goes in, and then it comes way out so that we get all of this fabric at the bottom, which is, I see it, makes such great sense because as you sit and cross your legs, then you have this fabric not binding you in any way. On Mary, we're very biasy in pure silk. 
on Laurie, we bring back that top to show you how you might use it, say, with a short dress. Remember how it is almost a stripe and how I have tried to respect that. Now, Laurie, if you put your hands up, can we get rid of this top and probably ruin your hairdo in the process and show that we don't have a lot of dress, <laughs> but it is very biasy. And once again, we've rimmed that hemline in a bias. This was a process that I did learn in the three years that I worked at Lone Valley in Paris. You really must do it on custom-made dresses or coats or suits. And of course, that's exactly what we're talking in the seminar here at Iowa State University, the textiles and clothing department. On Roxanne, more bias. This Alame, one from France, a chiffon weight one, so light that we needed to underline, and we did that in pure silk shantung. Again, that bias has wrapped around to straight grain so that I could put that zipper in on straight grain, indeed, not on bias. I think the gold, again, Roxanne's blondness is such a good look, and would you help me clean up the set, Roxanne? On Dr. Agatha Hubert Becker, the chairman of this beautiful department at Iowa State University, <coughs> Textile and Clothing. On Agatha, who has such a, I feel, such a regal look and such an authority when she wears clothes, we bring out Jersey in Kiana. That Kiana fiber can work beautifully, beautifully for you with bias cut. The skirt is very, very biasy, so that you're getting all of these folds. Agatha, can we show that rather bat wing look? Again, we're very, very biasy in that whole cape. Yes, I think it's rather dramatic, but don't you agree that Agatha wears it superbly? We're wearing, we're moving back into a bit of glamour. I went to the opening in Des Moines the other night of the Civic Center there, and I thought people were marvelously dressed. Here in Ames, when I go to the Hilton Coliseum, I think you should get turned out like this. Can't we be an example to the rest of the world? EJ in a very young dance dress. On Agatha Eupenbecker, you saw the fiber in Kiana. Here you're seeing the jersey in pure silk. It's rather hard to come by, and it is very costly. And again, I've used yards and yards, which you might like to swing around in. You're dancing. Would you notice, please, how we have overlaid this black lace over silk crepe? And we have done a great deal of work with some careful appliqueing and some very careful snapping here to hide the zipper. We're strapless, so it has an under bodice that is indeed boned. We're hitting some stra strapless looks in the seminar, and when I explained to the participant that she must do an under bodice, she's not always so happy with the work, but that's the only way we're going to be able to go, huh? Those crisp fabrics, back on the fashion scene I showed you, now, Tony, do we mind showing the world that you've got the skirt on backwards? <laughs> it happens. We should be backstage. There are two zippers on the side. We've about uh, 13 yards of pure silk taffeta here, made in Italy. We have done a little vest. And again, because Tony has that kind of a look, we're going to bring that same bandeau back. And if you're in a bit of a daring mood, Maybe you might think of such a costume as this. Could I give it back to you to show that we have lined in a beautiful piece of pure silk satin, the rest of the dress, pure silk taffeta. On Mary, a silk very, very much on the bias. The whatever we might want to call it, the capelet on the bias. It is really lined in a pure silk taffeta so that you could wear it on its own if you like, or wear it rather on its reverse side. The dress is the kind of long dress that while bare, I have a rather easy time selling in New York. Here again, an example of that bias. And I feel that this dress sells because we really have engineered it. The top of it almost works as a bra. So while it is backless and sleeveless, I feel it's very much there, engineered, I love that word for talking about garments, when you are doing some kind of special effect. Remember, we've taken all of the stretch out of these skinny little biases. We bring on Nikki Buck. We're thinking glamour here. We're thinking whether it be Paris, New York, Ames, Des Moines, 
you should show the world an example and get your most glamorous this season. The, whatever we might want to call it, the stole, it's uh, a pure silk georgette made in France, and I found these motifs in France. We backed them, and of course, I always lead myself into more work. I thought at first I'd have this one row, then we put the uh, cloak on a model in New York, and of course, she flipped around, and this looked ugly, so we had to do another layer under there. The dress on Nikki, a very heavy four-ply silk crepe, it couldn't be more bias. And of course, silk crepe is one of the beautiful mediums for bias cut. I did this first in a jersey. I'm sorry, may I hand you all of this, Nikki? I did this first in a muslin. And if perhaps you remember the tapes from last year, we indeed really work on that neckline so it does not gap when you sit. So in the dress on Nikki is this straight grain seam binding and we eased about seven eighths of an inch, more fabric against the measurement on the seam binding so that dress really stays with you. Nikki, I'm leading you down and I'm reminding all of you out there that we're in one of the laboratories of the textile and clothing department at Iowa State University.